Here are today's top stories. President Rodrigo Duterte dispels Joma Season's coma rumors by going live on Facebook. The Supreme Court denies a motion to re-raffle the election protest of Bongbong Marcos. Baguio City aspires to win the DOH Red Orchid Award for its anti-smoking campaign. And street dancing and colorful floats mark the end of Davao City's Kadayawan Festival. Good day. I'm William Theo. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. As critics continue to question his health and well-being, President Rodrigo Duterte went live on Facebook to disprove the rumor that he is in a coma. The rumors were the result of Communist Party founder Jose Maria Sison citing an unverified report on social media that Duterte was comatose. I'm alive, uh, fairly uh, healthy and uh, I'm having dinner with uh, the beautiful lady from the bow. She's Bernice. Uh, she's uh, only from Harvard, Babalikyon. Uh, I invited her to discuss uh, many things uh, along the way when she comes back. Uh, okay, pa naman ako. Uh, sabi nila kumatos. How can you be? Kumatos with the beautiful lady. Kung kumatos ako, makita ko si Bernice, talagang babangon ako. Uh, that's it. Uh, uh, ikaw yung kumatos, ikaw yung may sakit. At uh, alam mo, ang totoo lang, complain na rin ang Netherlands kasi labas-pasok ka sa ospital. Hindi ka man daw nagbabayad. You are not paying and you are abusing the hospitality of uh, the Netherlands. If you think that you are sick, uh, come home and I will bring you to a place. Uh, it's called Believe It. Pero Don, we will provide you with this space, a bed and uh, plenty to keep you company. The country commemorates two events on Tuesday, the Muslim celebration of Edil Adha and the death of Ninoy Aquino. President Rodrigo Duterte has called for unity among all faiths and to emulate the former senator's love for the country. Rom Dulfo has this story. President Rodrigo Duterte joined the Muslim community in commemoration of Edil Adha. The president expresses hope that all faiths find inspiration to live a life that transcends social, political, and cultural barriers. The president calls for unity in the common hope of building diverse communities that is rooted in mutual respect and peace. Idil Adha, or the Festival of Sacrifice, marks the culmination of the Hajj rites in Saudi Arabia near Mecca and is celebrated by Muslims worldwide. August 21 also coincides with the 35th death anniversary of former Senator Benigno Ninoy Aquino Jr. In a separate message, the President called on Filipinos to reflect on Aquino's sacrifice, saying the Philippines needs more people like Ninoy. The President also urged government leaders to emulate Aquino's dedication in serving the country. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Rom Dulfo. The Supreme Court has junked the request of Associate Justice Alfredo Benjamin Kagiwa for a re-raffle of the election protest of former Senator Bongbong Marcos. A newspaper report stated that Kagiwa wrote a memorandum expressing his intent to inhibit himself as ponente. Marcos has sought for Kagiwa to inhibit due to evident bias and manifest partiality in favor of Robredo. The former senator took note of the magistrate has close ties with former President Benigno Aquino III. Prior to his appointment to the SC in 2016, Kagiwa served as Justice Secretary during Aquino's term. The SC, meanwhile, warned that Kagiwa's document was privileged communication. The High Court also asked the media to be more circumspect and discerning in reporting unofficial and pending matters to prevent misleading the public. The Philippine National Police dismissed the expression of alarm by the Commission on Human Rights over the arrest of three lawyers during the raid in a bar in Makati. The lawyers were arrested during the raid at the Times Bar in Makati where police found assorted illegal drugs. 
PNP Chief Oscar Albayalde says the attempt by three lawyers to intimidate police and interfere with the enforcing of a search warrant was more alarming. The PNP chief maintains that the action of the three lawyers is considered an obstruction of justice. The lawyers are also facing charges of constructive possession of illegal drugs, which applies to person inside an area where drugs are found. The PNP chief reiterates that he will not allow anyone to interfere with the work of the police. Only 71 out of 440 hotels inspected in Boracay are found to be fully compliant and ready for the island's reopening on October 26. DILG's Undersecretary Epimaco Densing III says these 71 hotels, resorts and inns were found to be fully compliant with all permits and licenses. There are over 2,000 establishments in the famous tourist destination. DENR Undersecretary Ernesto Adobo Jr. said the interagency group is relying on the establishments to put up their respective sewage treatment plans. This as authorities look into the targeted compliance percentage of establishments in terms of wastewater management. Den Singh is optimistic Boracay will still be operational even with only 30 to 50 percent of its establishments open to accommodate guests. Den Singh emphasized that everyone is responsible for what happened to the island, adding that they are merely correcting what is seen as failed governance that led to its degradation. Local petroleum companies announced another round of increases in the price of unleaded gasoline Tuesday morning. In separate announcements, oil firms advised the public that their gasoline products will increase by a moderate 30 centavos per liter. There will, however, be a 20 centavo per liter rollback in the price of kerosene. Diesel prices will remain unchanged this week. Last week, the price of diesel went up by 25 centavos per liter and gasoline prices increased by 15 centavos per liter. Smokesman for the oil industry said price adjustments reflect the movement in the international petroleum market which are being passed on to local consumers. Still to come, aspiring third telco players are warned against forging relations with PLDT and Globe. Baguio City aspires to win the DOH Red Orchid Award for its anti-smoking campaign. These and more when the PNA Newsroom continues. August 13, Lunes, Malacanang. Pinanumpa ni Pangulong Rodrigo Roa Duterte ang halos dalawang daang bagong talagang government officials. Nag-send off ceremony siya para sa mga manlalaro ng Pilipinas sa nalapit na 18th Asian Games na gaganapin sa Indonesia. As we send our best men and women in the 18th Asian Games, remember that you do not only compete for yourselves, but also carry with you the pride of your families, your communities, and the entire Filipino nation. August 14, Martes, Malacanang. The courtesy call to Pangulong Duterte si Japanese Ambassador Koji Haneda. Tinanggap ng Pangulo ang isang portrait mula sa artist na si Maki Bungabong. Dumalo siya sa Pilipinas ang atlat program ng Go Negosyo. Tinanggap din ng Pangulo ang replika ng Marawi Filipino Chinese Friendship Dome, ang 200 milyong piso multi-purpose center na bigay ng Filipino Chinese community para sa mga biktima ng Marawi siege. Kinagabihan ay nakipaghapura naman ang chief executive sa mga membro ng kabisara ng mga broadcaster ng Pilipinas. August 15, Miyerkules, Malacanang. The courtesy call sa Pangulo si Qatar Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdul Rahman Al Thani upang palakasin pa ang ugnayan ng Pilipinas at Qatar. Tinanggap ni Pangulong Duterte ang 32.03 billion pesos dividend remittances mula sa ilang government-owned and controlled corporations sa pagdiriwang ng GOCC Day sa Malacanang. Ako po si Secretary Martin Andanar at ito ang Duterte on Duty. Abang ang susunod na linggo, ang mga gagawin ng Pangulo.
Aspiring telecommunications players are advised by the Philippine Competition Commission or PCC to stay away from the country's telco duopoly to be recognized as a third player. Benj Bondok tells us more. A prospective new telco player should keep a safe distance from the industry's existing duopoly. This was the stand of the Philippine Competition Commission on the latest terms of reference by the Department of Information and Communications Technology, which utilizes the highest committed level of service or H clause as the mode of selection for the new major telco player. The bidder to be selected as the country's new major player should not have any merger plans or joint venture agreements with either the dominant telco players or their related parties. Any participation shall be reported to the PCC. Furthermore, the participant must return their assigned frequencies to the National Telecommunications Commission. The new major player is likewise mandated to report on its commitments and its progress on pursuing its rollout plans. The ICT Acting Secretary Eliseo Rio Jr. reiterated that a new telco player must have technical and financial capability to compete with the existing players in providing quality communication services. The DICT and NTC will conduct a public hearing on the draft guidelines on Thursday, August 23. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Ben Bondo. A business group is urging the government to speed up the upgrading of Ninoy Aquino International Airport or NAIA. The Management Association of the Philippines or MAP noted that NAIA is a critical gateway of the country which is aptly supported by both road and mass transport infrastructure. The association said that the suspension of NAIA operations should never be an option which they consider as very drastic and counterproductive move. The association also noted that in other countries, old city airports were not closed down but rather upgraded and complemented. The MAP is batting for a dual airport system, citing NAIA and Clark International Airport possibly complementing each other. The statement came after NAIA's operations were derailed for nearly two days after the landing mishap of Shaman Air, which blocked NAIA's runway. More than 200 flights were cancelled, affecting thousands of passengers. Baguio City is hoping to get its first Red Orchid Award from the Department of Health for its campaign against smoking. Baguio has banned smoking in public places in line with President Rodrigo Duterte's Executive Order 26 with its smoke-free Baguio Ordinance since May 2017. The city's anti-smoking task force has apprehended over a thousand violators. The anti-smoking drive is also implemented in line with the Clean Air Act. The Red Orchid Award is the DOH's search for tobacco-free offices and agencies that pass the World Health Organization standards. The Red Orchid is the highest award, followed by the Pink Orchid Award for the second place and the White Orchid Award for the third spot. The 33rd Kadayawan Festival in Davao City is being considered this early as a success with thousands of tourists flocking to the city to join in the festivities. Gachi Gachalian, president of the Davao Tourism Association, says this year's festival is evidently well attended despite the lack of numbers on paper. Aside from the crowds, Gachalian noted the full occupancy of hotels in the city even before the Kadayawan started. Kadayawan was formally opened on August 10 and ended last August 19 with a Pamulak or Floral Float Parade. Gachalian thanked the festival partners, the media and participants and guests for making this year's Kadayawan Festival a success. 669 newly promoted uniformed personnel based in the Police Regional Office 9 took their oath in a simultaneous maths oath-taking and donning of rank ceremony. Chief Superintendent Billy Beltran, Regional Director, led the mass oath-taking and donning of ranks and 246 personnel in Camp Romeo Abendan in Zamboanga City. Other police personnel took their oaths at the Zamboanga Sibugay Police Provincial Office, Zamboanga del Sur, Zamboanga del Norte, Zamboanga City Police Office, and Isabela City Police Station. Beltran also led the awarding of the Medallia ng Kagalingan to 25 officers and policemen for the operational accomplishments against criminality. In a related development, Superintendent Lincoln Buklasan of the PRO 9 Logistics Division was awarded 
awarded the Medalla ng Kasanayan for his involvement in five infrastructure projects in the region. Up next, Coast Guard and Customs personnel intercept sacks of smuggled sugar in Basilan. Street dancing and colorful floats mark the end of Davao City's Karayawan Festival. The PNA Newsroom returns after these reminders. Lumahok sa isinagawang Bangsamoro Young Leaders Assembly ang daan-daang mga kabataan mula sa limang probinsya ng ARMM nitong August 14 at 15 sa Sharif Kabunsoan Cultural Complex sa lungsod ng Cotabato. Ang aktibidad ay inorganisa ng Office of the Regional Governor katuwang ang ilang mga ahensya ng rehiyon. Naglalayon ito na magkaroon ng dialogo sa pagitan ng mga kabataang leader ukol sa usapin at nilalaman ng Bangsamoro Organic Law. Sentro din sa talakayan ang papel na dapat gampanan ng isang kabataan sa mga isyu tungkol sa peace and order, seguridad at kaunlaran sa kanilang mga komunidad. Ayon sa isa sa mga guest speaker na si Yusek Cesar B. Yano, under Secretary for Defense Operations ng Department of National Defense, malaki ang may tutulong ng mga kabataan upang masugpo ang anumang uri ng karahasan at terorismo. Kaya naman, hinikayat niya ang mga ito na makibahagi sa mga aksyon at plano ng mga lokal na pamahalaan. Sa mensahe naman ni Governor Mujib Hataman, hinikayat niya ang mga kabataan na magkaisa sa bagong landas na tatahaki ng mamamayang Bangsamoro. Hindi lang yung transisyon ng batas o ng bureaucracy mula sa ang papuntang POL o ng BART kung hindi even yung transisyon ng kaisipan natin mula ngayon hanggang sa bulan. Kung bakit marami sa ating mga kababaya at ang kagira at kung bakit marami din sa ating mga ninuno ang nagsakribisyo para sa interes natin, tayo gusto nilang malaya, tayo gusto nilang matahimik ang buhay natin Isa-isang sinagot ng mga resource speakers ang tanong ng ilang kabataan sa mga maaaring mangyari sa nalalapit na transisyon ng Bangsamoro government. Ilan sa mga miyembro ng panel ay sina Police Chief Inspector Edmond Thompson at Police Senior Superintendent Percival Placer ng PMP Pro-Arm, MNLF Consultative Committee Attorney Bong Parcasio, Bangsamoro Transition Commission, Commissioner Dr. Susana Anayatin at MILF Implementing Panel Chair Mohager Iqbal. Ang mga ahensya na katuwang ng ORG sa isinagawang assembly ay ang ARMM Regional Darul Ifta, ARMM Development Academy, Office of the Bangsamoro Youth Affairs at Department of Interior and Local Government ng ARMM. Nagsagawa din ng workshop ang mga lumahok na Bangsamoro Young Leaders sa huling araw ng aktividad para sa mga action plans na magpapatatag sa pundasyon ng mga kabataan tungo sa magandang hinaharap. Mula sa Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao at Bureau of Public Information, ako si Mark Anthony Uy para sa The Working ARMM Government. Motorists are advised to stay clear as parts of EDSA in Mandaluyong City will be temporarily closed down on Tuesday. This is to give way to maintenance and cleaning of the valves of Manila water lines in the EDSA southbound service road in front of Star Mall. The maintenance work is related to the emergency leak repairs done in the same area last August 16. Vehicles going to Makati are advised to take the underpass, while those turning left or taking a U-turn to Edsa northbound via Shaw Boulevard may turn right and take the first U-turn slot at the Shaw eastbound lane. Vehicles turning right towards Kalentong will also use an alternate route passing through Star Mall. Coast Guard and Customs personnel have intercepted a shipment of smuggled imported sugar worth over 3 million pesos near Basilan. Authorities intercepted the MB Fatima Shakira Sunday evening. The vessel with a crew of nine was found to be carrying some 1,750 kilo sacks of imported sugar from nearby Malaysia without pertinent documents. The vessel was escorted to the local port and was turned over to the Bureau of Customs. 
Sunday's apprehension was the second within a week's time made by the Coast Guard. Last August 13, they intercepted the ML Sabrina and its cargo consisting of 5,000 sacks of smuggled sugar worth 10 million pesos near Tawi-Tawi. The Philippines collected another bronze medal in the 18th Asian Games courtesy of Agatha Christensen Wong. Wong, a 20-year-old student from the De La Salle College of St. Benil, finished third in the women's Taijian event in Wushu. Indonesia's Lin Suel Kwok claimed the gold, while Hong Kong's Mo Huen Ying Juanita won the silver medal. Wong is a gold medalist in the 2017 SEA Games in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, and bagged the silver medal in the 2015 World Championships in Jakarta, Indonesia, and claimed the bronze medal in the Asian Championships in Taoyuan, Chinese Taiwan. The Kadayawan Festival in Davao City ended successfully amid an array of colorful floats, native costumes, and street dancing. Janice Cave has the story. Amid the searing heat in Davao, the Kadayawan Festival ended with hundreds of locals and visitors blocking the major streets and the San Pedro Square to witness the Indak Indak sa Kadalanan, Pamulak, and Pitik Kadayawan. These were the major culminating highlights of the week-long festival honoring the city's 11 tribes and celebrating the bountiful harvest of fruits and flowers. Mayor Sara Duterte declared the Kadayawan a success and thanked the people who strived hard to produce a joyful and successful festival as well as the residents who came out to witness and join in on the festivities. City Tourism Chief General Stex Son is also pleased with the turnout of this year's festival, noting the increasing number of sponsors as well as support from the Dabawenyas themselves. Davao City National High School retained its crown in the Davao School-Based Open Category and the Best Music Award. In the Open Category, the Mati National Comprehensive High School took home the first place. The Davao Horse Club won first place in the Lahi Category of the Pamulak or Float Parade Competition. The top prize went to Teleperformance under the Gamay category. Kisan Lu and Development took home the first prize under the Dako category. In the Pitik Kadayawan, judges declared the Asuncion Drum Beaters as this year's champion. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Janice Cave. Let's now check out the weather forecast for Metro Manila and the rest of the country. Here's another look at today's top stories. President Rodrigo Duterte dispels Joma Season's coma rumors by going live on Facebook. The Supreme Court denies a motion to re-raffle the election protest of Bongbong Marcos. Baguio City aspires to win the DOH Red Orchid Award for its anti-smoking campaign. And street dancing and colorful floats mark the end of Davao City's Kadeawan Festival. Thank you for watching another edition of the PNA Newsroom. To check out these and other stories, visit the PNA website or follow the Philippine News Agency on Facebook and Twitter. For more stories about the government and how it serves the Filipinos, look for these hashtags in all of our social media platforms and websites. And as we celebrate Edil Adha, keep in mind that even the smallest sacrifices have a big impact in the future. And at this point, we would also like to greet our very own boss, a PCOO Secretary, Mr. Martin Andanar, a very, very happy birthday. God bless. And that's your daily dose of the latest news and information that you need to know. From the PNA Newsroom, I am William Theo. Good day.